In my video yesterday, I discussed how Bethesda released some pretty massive news around Fallout 76, that being that the private test server is now, at least for the time being, the public test server. And shortly after that news went live, the servers went back up, featuring a plethora of new things for Fallout 76. The three major ones are the Legendary Perk System, the Wendigo Colossus event known as a Colossal Problem, and finally the Public Teams mechanic. So in this video, I'm going to go over all of those, but be warned, this is on the public test server. It is not the final version of this that will go live. It seems like it'll probably go live on the regular public servers at the end of June, or at least towards the latter half of June. So in this video, what I want to do is give an overview and my first impressions on these features, as now that's probably more valuable than ever, as these can and likely will be changed or tweaked before they actually go live for everyone. So that is important to keep in mind, what you're seeing in the background is an early build of this content and not inherently representative of the final product. And of course also, if you don't want to know about some of these features ahead of time, don't watch this video. I mean, I guess this is in some way spoilers, there's no story spoilers in this or anything like that, just new mechanics coming to the game. But either way, one of the first things I do want to go over, if you do want to access the private test server yourself, I know some people have been having some problems. Basically, all you need to do is own Fallout 76 on Bethesda.net, and you should see the Fallout 76 PTS, which now means public test server, pop up in your launcher and you can download it and then just log on. Some users weren't having this actually show up as a download and Bethesda has responded to that. It seems like they're fixing it right now and for many already it has been fixed. So if last night you tried and couldn't find it, perhaps try again or try again a little bit later today. Even further, one of the cool aspects of this is they actually give you a couple of free characters. So hypothetically when you log on, you should see a PTS test character while selecting which character you want to play as. One being level 250 so you could try out the new legendary perk system and the other one just having some OP gear. It seems like for some people they have this already, other ones are getting it in a future update, I don't personally have this yet. But moving on to the new content itself, let's first look at legendary perks because that's the thing we've known about for the longest and is probably one of the most anticipated, especially over the long term. Now as you log in and go to the perk selection screen in Fallout 76, you'll find a new section you can click on that with legendary perks. So now starting in game, once you hit level 50, 75, 100, 150, 200, and 300, you will unlock one new legendary perk slot. From this, you can actually select one of 16 legendary perks in total, each of which has four ranks. We'll go over what exactly these perks do, but do note that once you unlock this slot, it is one, available on all of your characters, so I unlocked it by being a high level on my main character, but then I could switch over to my lower level one and I still have that legendary slot. But even further, you can mix and match which perk cards go in here. So if right off the bat you pick the unarmed explosive one, you could later on switch that on the fly. It has no cost associated with it, you won't lose out or anything. You could have different combinations on different characters. I think a lot of people don't realize that yes, you can actually swap these out whenever you want. So it is a good thing to mess about with, whether it be on one of your other characters or your main character. You could really change things up depending on which build you have on either. But of course note, you are limited to six slots in total and you'll get the final one at level 300. Similar to regular perk cards, you can actually upgrade these using perk coins, which is a new currency in the game. The way you'll get perk coins is by scrapping some traditional perk cards. Now as you go through your perk cards, you'll notice you have the option to scrap them, and doing so will either give you 1 or 5x coins. Regular perk cards just give you 1, but if you have a golden one, which you probably remember from opening perk card packs, this will give you 5 times the normal amount. And it's not 5, it's actually 5x, which is important because, let's say I have one that is golden, you could actually then upgrade it with two other perk cards, even if they're not golden, and then it will scrap for 10 or 15 or even more perk coins, which right now that is easily the best and most optimal way to actually scrap these. So if you find one that is 5x, I highly recommend upgrading it, because as you'll see, it is very expensive to actually upgrade these perk cards. It starts off at 100 and increases by 50 increment coins, so 100, 150, 200 to get the max level, which is really hard to actually get. That is without a doubt the most difficult part about this grind overall, at least in my eyes. Some people are doing some calculations saying you would have to be over level 1000 to max out all six of the perk card slots. So now for what exactly these perk cards are, they kind of fall into certain categories. There are four around explosions. So there's one for melee, one for throwing, one for ranged, and then one for unarmed. And what that'll do is make it so you have a percentage chance to cause an explosion when attacking somebody with that weapon type. 
Three, that will reduce the damage you take if you wear a full set of a certain type of armor. So a full set of heavy armor, light armor, or sturdy armor. A couple focused around teams. Like one, when you die, your teammates will automatically gain 25 damage resistance as well as 40 HP over eight seconds. There's a 10% chance while harvesting flora for you to actually get two HP a second and 25 damage resistance to the team. One where enemies will take more damage when they attack you if you're on a team. A chance that enemy attacks will recharge a fusion core. A chance for you to automatically revive if you are downed while wearing power armor, even if you're not in a team. One where if you do range sneak damage, it'll actually increase damage output against a specific enemy. A 20% or more chance to heal and deal better damage for 15 seconds if you successfully block an attack. One that will give you additional rad resist and actually restore one rad per second so remove any radiation you have. And then finally, one that will give you a special chem after a certain amount of time, allowing you to hold up to a certain number. That chem being the super chem and it'll basically increase your strength, damage resistance, and give you additional melee damage. So overall, when it comes to these legendary perks, I think a lot of people, including myself, find them to be pretty good, especially if you get to the full upgrades, which is easier on some of the earlier ones because you'll probably just right off the bat have a ton of cards to scrap, but these really don't make you god tier or anything like that, in particular using, let's say, the unarmed explosive one, even with an upgrade. A lot of times when using these explosive perks, it wasn't a huge make or break moment because it either doesn't proc super often or just doesn't do a ton of damage even if you do proc it super often. I could see this being pretty good on something like an LMG or other high rate of fire weapon to have additional explosive damage, but most of the time I was either killing an enemy so quickly that it either didn't matter or it was a boss tier enemy so it didn't actually do that much damage in the grand scheme of things. The ones that seem like they'll be the most helpful are those damage resistance if you wear a full set of a certain type of armor. Definitely seems like it'll be powerful or even that limited time super chem. It only lasts for 5 minutes, but 30% increase to melee damage if you are a melee build could be pretty massive. Several hundred damage depending on your other stats. Personally though, a lot of them just didn't feel super inspired. I would love some more out there kind of weird build specific cards. Like a card I could try out just to give me a particular playstyle, even if it's kind of odd, but this level legendary per card makes it work almost. There's a lot of cool concepts or ideas out there, many people are already posting about this on the forum, so I'm sure we'll see something. Overall, not a bad system in its current form, I think it just could be a lot better. One of the other big new features are public teams, which you can now create or join on a server. There are six of these in total, several of which having different themes, whether it be role playing, adventuring, exploring, or even just casual play. And functionally, the way this will work is when you or somebody else creates a public team on a server, a big alert message will go out to seemingly everyone on the server. And also there will be an icon above your head in game and even an icon on the map. There's no inviting for this. So if you have a public team, anyone can just join it. And more or less by doing so, it's kind of geared around one particular thing, but it will give you a bonus. You could do a hunting public team where you will get increased experience for legendary enemy kills or the events public team that will give you increased experience for completing events. The trick is though, how much increased experience you get will go up depending on how many team members are in your team with a bond. To form a bond, basically you just join a public team and then stay in it playing with the same people for a bit. It seems like it's pretty short right now, only five minutes. I wouldn't be shocked if on release they up that number because now it's just in testing. And you can get this to pretty huge bonuses, whether it be plus three or four of a certain special stat for several of them, or 100% increased experience gain from completing an event or taking down a legendary enemy. Right now, the systems vary in your face. Like if you look at the map or even are just playing, you'll have it pop up several times if you're not in a team already, which I guess is the point. You want people playing together. Although I definitely hope there is a way to disable this once it does fully come out because I could see that getting really obnoxious. On the PTS, there's a lot of veteran players because, you know, it's a public test server. That's kind of who you expect to play on it. But I could definitely see this being a valuable resource for newer players just trying to mess around or get their feet wet doing one thing or another. I'm not sure how effective it'll actually be at getting that group of people to do what they want. Like, I don't think the role players will role play that often, just not something you commonly see on public servers. But the teams themselves definitely are powerful to always be in just to get a bonus. And overall, on these public teams, people tend to talk and interact much more often so it definitely increases the social aspect and just a good way to randomly meet players on your server that are probably trying to do the same thing as you. 
So overall, I'd say this is a good one from Bethesda. Although with time, we'll see how much of this is actually random users playing with random players or how much of it is just people who are typically in their own team now are on a public team to get those bonuses. But then last but not least, we do have the new short quest with something sentimental and the larger event with a colossal problem. To kick off the quest, something sentimental, either talk to Maggie in Foundation, which was an existing NPC, you could just find her there now, or alternatively, while doing the quest, a colossal problem, you will find a hollow tape and it'll automatically proc you to actually pick up this hollow tape in the Monaga mine. From there, you're going to have to get into the Monaga mine. The only way to get in is by nuking it, but even further, specifically right when a nuke spawns, when you nuke this area now, it will start a colossal problem, which will open up this brand new interior location. But after you complete the event, it does close out. So it's not like it'll always be something you can explore. It's just there for a short while. But then of course, we do have a colossal problem, which is the pretty cool new boss fight you could find in the Monaga mine. Again, just start it by nuking it, there's no other steps involved. From there you can fast travel to it, very similar to a queen fight. This will take you to a new interior location in the Monaco mine. There's a few things to find, a little bit of lore around what was going on down here, as well as that holotype and other backstory by Earl Williams. In the larger part of the mine, there's just basically a waiting area until the mine shaft itself clears. And once that happens, you will have the full-on fight against the Wendigo Colossus, a specific named one named Earl Williams. So the fight itself is honestly somewhat normal. You'll be fighting against a Wendigo Colossus. There are no steps or anything like that. The goal is just to kill the Wendigo Colossus. The Wendigo Colossus, of course, does have a unique ability to spawn Wendigo spawns. So these will be attacking you. And it feels like, at least during this event, they were way more plentiful than past battles with the Colossus. Also, as you're down here, the mine itself will kind of be falling apart. You only cleared it out with a nuke, and it's not really meant to stay open. So that's a big theme of this. These little red almost pools will pop up on the ground and provide some weird effects. It'll slow you and sometimes you'll get random damage. And I gotta say, overall, the interior of this mine portion was really well designed. It's a really cool boss location area. Unfortunately, as cool as this area is, the boss fight itself was so close to being awesome that it just fell short. From data mining, we knew that Bethesda originally intended a colossal problem to be way more of a boss fight with different steps. What we have right now on the PTS, and it seems like what they ended up going live with, is more so similar to the queen fight, just kill them. But in the past, there was going to be things where you had to damage the Wendigo Colossus and actually use a radiated TNT to blow up things it would feed off of. We don't really get anything like that with this. It's a relatively straightforward battle. It still is a ton of fun. One, because it gives you some variety from the queen, while still also being a three-star guaranteed spawn and a nice big fight for the whole server to participate in. And actually, there's a little bit of added loot with this one. Just by completing the event, a colossal problem, you can get some unique rewards, such as some Wendigo Colossus themed items for your camp. I don't want to spoil all of these. I'll do that in my full video on this when the update actually goes live. But even further, you could also get something new with a cursed weapon. A lot of people have been having trouble finding this particular door, including me. But after taking down the Wendigo Colossus, you can get this loot crate, very similar to how it worked in the Vault 94 raids. From this, you can get a variety of items, including three cursed weapons. These are three-star legendaries with fixed effects. There's a great post breaking it down, but right now there's a harpoon gun, a shovel, as well as a pickaxe. I guess meant to be somewhat mining themed, but they all also have the unique cursed effect which will reduce their durability, making it so they break faster, but improves attack rate as well as their attack damage. So these will inherently be basically glass cannon weapons, doing better damage than alternatives, even with the same legendary effects, but also not quite as random because they only have these specific legendary effects, although it is a pretty good combo. I really love this concept. I think it makes this boss fight feel unique and interesting, but I think it'd be a lot cooler if it was just randomized like a typical legendary. Let's say you have a 25% chance at getting a cursed weapon, but what the weapon was or what kind of legendary effects it currently has is totally random. Either way, right now these three are a great start and I would love to see an expansion on this, even if it's just one for each weapon category. Like for somebody who used unarmed, like my character, then these weapons are super viable for me, but again, I really think the concept is cool. Overall, the fight itself, I think, could have been cooler. I think they were on the right track with what we had data mined, but for one reason or another, they went with this direction. And even still, a colossal problem is a fantastic addition to the game, giving a lot of diversity between Queen fights as well as the Wendigo Colossus fight. The two feel very different, and particularly that cave really gives this one its own unique identity. 
when you throw on top these unique rewards, in particular with the legendary weapons, I'm very excited to see what Bethesda does with this similar concept in the future. That's a pretty good recap of all the major things we found on the public test server. Some minor things, there's actually a few map markers that were changed. Relatively minor, but kind of cool to see them doing that for the more notable locations. Even further, vending machines are working on the PTS. So if for some reason you absolutely cannot play this game without those, you can get them here. But as I mentioned yesterday, that they should be coming back to regular servers at some point in the next week. Although unfortunately, several other things weren't fixed on the PTS. This isn't all of patch 20, but it does signify that they still aren't fixed. The fast travel bug is still on this build. It's really frustrating, really annoying, and I would like to see this fixed at some point, but overall that's a good recap and an idea of what to look forward to with Fallout 76. All this content is really fun. None of it is a negative addition to the game. Some of it can definitely still be improved, but it's still a solid update to Fallout 76 and I'm excited for everyone else to get to experience it. As always again, I hope you found this video informative or just helpful. Tomorrow I'm going to have a special data mine based video. There's a lot in the files of the PTS and when I say a lot, like actually a lot, lot, like on the Brotherhood of Steel. But even further, Bethesda has recently made some comments around the future of 76. I'm going to have that in a separate video, including some details on mod support. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.